nationwide general knowledge contest for the title Brain of Britain 1990. The chairman is Robert Robinson. Hello. This week, four contestants come from the north to play intellectual arms down. They are Brian Doherty, a postgraduate student from Newcastle, Mark Humphreys, a teacher from Halifax, John Gillett, an insurance agent from Barnsley, and Mrs. Margaret Jones, a civil servant from Leeds. <laughs> the rules are few. Let's begin. Mr. Doherty, how many rows of beans did W.B. Yeats say he would have on the Lake Isle of Innisfree? 250. No, it, it would not have scanned. Missy Jones? Nine. Nine is the answer. Yes, well done. Uh, Mr. Humphreys, another name for what the Americans call corn or Indian corn. Can you give it to us? Maize? Yes, certainly. On the banks of the River Ganges in India, there are two cities holy to Hindus. Can you name one of them? Uh, Benares or Varanasi. Yes. The full name of the company, BSA, made it clear what it originally made. What was that? Birmingham Small Arms. Yes. And what other domesticated animal is the alpaca a close relative? A llama? Yes. On television, what is the name of Blackadder's servant, played by Tony Robinson? Baldrick. Yes. Five in a row. No longer there was an uncontrolled burst of applause. If you've got five in a row, you get the extra mark. Six, Mr. Gillett. Which European country's national radio and television network is known as RAI, an acronym of the letters R-A-I? Italy. Yes. What is the name of the so-called Isle in Somerset, whither King Alfred retreated after his defeat by the Danes in 878? Other one. No. Mr. Humphreys. Athelney. Yes. Mrs. Jones. Which mountain in Greece was believed to be the home of Zeus and the other gods. Olympus. Yes. According to the Acts of the Apostles, Judas Iscariot bought a field with the money he was given for betraying Jesus, and he died there. The field came to be called Akeldama, which means what in English? The field of the elder trees. No. What might it be called, Mr. Gillett, Mr. Humphreys, Mr. Doherty? Oh, you won't do it. It's called the field of blood. And that brings us to the end of the first round. Mr. Doherty is yet to score one to Mr. Gillard, two to Mrs. Jones, seven to Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Mr. Doherty, the Harlem district of New York has a name derived from that of Harlem in the Netherlands. How do the two Harlems differ in their spelling? Um, well, the American one's just got one A, and the Dutch one's got two. That's right. Which writer was married to General Sir Frederick Boy Browning, who commanded the first Allied Airborne Corps during the Arnhem Operation? Daphne de Murray. Right. What did the Birken Wills expedition accomplish in 1861? Crossed Australia. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Rather reluctant nod from my clock, because he wanted you to say crossed Australia from south to north. But they did cross Australia. Whichever way they did it, you're right. Which animal is known in West Country dialect as a furs pig? Badger. No. Mr. Humphreys? The hedgehog. Yes. Your turn. There are two universities in Glasgow. One is the University of Glasgow, founded in 1451. What is the other, which was founded in 1964? It's Strathclyde. It is. Where is the daily newspaper L'Osservatore Romano published? Rome? No. Mrs. Jones? Milan. No. Mr. Gillett? Bologna. No. Come on, Mr. Doherty, give it the college try uh, again. Well, unless it's Ru Romania. Uh, no, it isn't Romania. That's through Vatican City. Oh, yeah. Which is in Rome, but not of Rome. Ah, yes. Mr. Gillett, what was Winston Churchill doing in South Africa when he was taken prisoner by the Boers in 1899? He was a journalist. Yes, he was. He was reporting for the Morning Post. What was the name of the Chancellor of Austria who was murdered by Nazis in 1934? No. Mr. Doherty? Dolphus? Yes, Dolphus is the answer. Mrs. Jones? What was the Europeanized name of Ankara, the capital of Turkey? Angora. Yes. One of the senior London livery companies is the Cordwainers. What trade or craft did Cordwainers originally practice? M wagon wheels. No, I've often wondered. It sounds so glamorous. Mr. Gillard. Ropes. No, no, I sometimes thought that. Mr. Humphreys. Timber. No. Mr. Doherty. 
Well, no, I do, honestly. <laughs> You know, you won't do it. It's shoemaking, which you might well have said if you chanced it. Shoemaking. Now, let me see how things stand. Two to Mr. Gillard, three to Mrs. Jones, four to Mr. Doherty, nine to Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> now, we hear the opening lines, or rather we don't. I thought it was going to be sung, but alas, it's only me saying them. <laughs> the opening lines of a poem called The Song of the Mad Prince, the words of which provided the title for one of the poet's books of verse for children. And Mr. Doherty must tell us who, who wrote them. Who said peacock pie, the old king to the sparrow? Who said crops are ripe, rust to the harrow? I'll have to guess uh, someone like Edward Lear. No, not Edward Lear. Yes, Mr. Humphreys. T.S. Eliot. No. Mr. Gillard. Yes. No. Mrs. Jones. Um, Lewis Carroll. No, it was Walter de la Mer. Mr. Humphreys, what island is separated from its neighbours by the Sunda Strait on the west and the Bali Strait on the east? Java. Yes, it is. Of which element is tritium, a radioactive isotope? Hydrogen. Yes. Now, this song comes from an American musical opened in London last year, 55 years after it first appeared on Broadway, Though this particular song was not in the original show, you have to tell us who wrote it. It's the rebel in a jam, here I am. It's the rebel in a mess, it's the rest. If you ever feel so happy you land in jail, I'm your bail. It's friendship, friendship, just a perfect friendship. Now, who wrote that? Irving Berlin. No. Mrs. Jones. Rogers and Hammerstein. No. Mr. Doherty. Cole Porter. Had to be Cole Porter if it wasn't the others. Yes, indeed. <laughs> Uh, the singers uh, were Judy Garland and Johnny Mercer. It's now Mr. Gillard's turn. Which actor and playwright wrote the volumes of autobiography Present Indicative and Future Indefinite? John Gilgood. No. Mr. Humphreys. Is it Dirk Bogart? No. You can't think of anyone who might have written something about himself and called it that. I bet if I did the accent you'd get it. Now you can't answer because... And I can't do the accent anyway. It was Noel Coward. Yes. So whose turn is it? It's Mrs. Jones. The National Council for Civil Liberties has adopted a shorter name. What is it? Liberty. Right. What is a serpentine verse? Is it one where the lines get shorter uh, as they go on? No, it isn't that. that. That's a very good notion. Yes, Mr. Humphreys. Is it one where the words themselves make a shape? Like in the no. In one line? No. The, 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 some people poem. make poems in that form, do they not? Shall I tell you, Mr. Gillett, Mr. Doherty? Yes, I will. They nod. They're anxious to know. I must tell them. It's a metrical line that ends with the same word that it began with. And the reference serpentine is to servants with their tails in their mouths. So there you have it. And here are the scores. Two to Mr. Gillett, four to Mrs. Jones, five to Mr. Doherty, eleven to Mr. Humphreys. Where, Mr. Doherty, are the Pernambuco Abyssal Plain, the Rio Grande Rise, and the Argentine Abyssal Plain? Brazil. No. Mr. Humphreys? In the Atlantic Ocean. Yes, the South Atlantic Ocean. You didn't want to be officious and say, no, but I that was it. What can you tell me now, Mr. Humphreys, about the bearer of a coat of arms which is lozenge or diamond shaped? But is it the person's dead? No. Yes, Mrs. Jones. Um, are they a duke? No, no. Oh, I must tell you again that the bearer of the arms is a woman, unmarried, a widow, or a peeress in her own right. Now it's Mr. Gillett. In computing, R-O-M means read-only memory. What does P-R-O-M mean? No idea. Oh, dear me. I, no, I won't let... Uh, no, 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 it's too easy. Too easy to uh, pass on that. What would the P stand for, Mr. Gillett? No idea. <laughs> well, it might stand for Pernambuco. We had it just no, a minute no. ago. <laughs> so I safely say that since it doesn't. Oh, I'll leave you alone, Mr. Gillett. I'll leave you alone. I'm, I'm getting to be a terrible bully. Mr. Doherty. Programmable. We don't remember. Exactly. I thought you might have got it, but no. Yes, it's a, a distinct tendency to clap there. Why not do it? 
Missy Jones, what name do rugby league teams from New Zealand tour under? The All Blacks. Uh, no, Mr. Doherty? Kiwis. Yes, the All Blacks are the rugby union ones. Near, very near. And the scores are two to Mr. Gillard, four to Mrs. Jones, seven to Mr. Doherty, twelve to Mr. Humphrey. And now we are going to have a couple of questions uh, from one of our listeners. And those questions um, are, he hopes to bowl you all over. You say you must generate an answer between you. The first of the questions, sent in by Mr. Peter Effer from Walthamstow, is this. Whose dying words are reported as being, either this wallpaper goes or I do? A likely story, but it's good enough. Oscar Wilde. Yes, it's got to be Oscar Wilde. Or it could have been Noel Card, or it might have been Ben Trovato, you never know. But it was Oscar Wilde. Now, Mr. Effer's second question is this. What was the original occupation of Thomas Paine, the English political theorist whose books The Rights of Man and Common Sense had a great impact on the American and French revolutions? Was he a farm worker? No, he was not. He was a corset maker. Oh. <laughs> and he was entirely unashamed of it, and quite right too. So, uh, <laughs> you won the first one, but that was easy, I thought. Don't want to rub it in, but I thought it was fairly easy. Second one you didn't get, and so Mr. Effer from Walthamstow gets his Brain of Britain quiz book and a round of applause. <laughs> what uh, relation, Mr. Doherty, to Edward the Confessor was his successor, King Harold? Nephew. No, not nephew. Mr. Humphreys? Cousin. No, not cousin. Mr. Gillard? Brother. No, not brother. Grandson. No, a brother-in-law. Got, got close to it there, Mr. Gillard, but brother-in-law is the answer. Mr. Humphreys, what was David Waddington's job before he succeeded Douglas Hurd as Home Secretary last October? Is he Secretary of the Treasury? No, Mr. Doherty. Trade and Industry? No. Yes, Mrs. Jones? Chief Whip. He was Chief Whip. You got it. Well done. <laughs> Mr. Gillett, which detective story writer had her oeuvre and her chief character kept going after her death by her husband, who was Philip Youngman Carter, though her name was quite different, or the name she wrote under? Agatha Christie. No. No. It usually is Agatha Christie. Mrs. Jones. <coughs> Dorothy Sayers. No. So those are the two front runners down. But this name is also in the frame, if that's not an unkind way of putting it. Uh, Mr. Humphreys. Is it, I don't know if she's still alive. Is it P.L. Travers? No, she's very much alive, oh. uh, Miss, uh, <laughs> Miss Travers. Uh, yes, yes. Unless you meant P.D. James. I might have done that. You know. might have done that. <laughs> when I said yes, that's who I meant. How awful. <laughs> I think they're both alive and well, and long may so remain. Mr. Yes. Doherty, have you got a detective story writer, lady? No, you haven't. Her name was Marjorie Anningham. And now, it's Mrs. Jones, what is the group name of a number of leopards? I mean, what might it be, really? Out of time, Mr. Humphreys. It's a leap. It is, of course, a leap. I don't know why I say of course, but once you know the answer, you realise it could be anything else. At the end of the round, the scores are two to Mr. Gillett, five to Mrs. Jones, seven to Mr. Doherty, thirteen to Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Mr. Doherty, in 1877, J.J. Thompson read a paper before the Royal Society about a discovery which has been described as marking the greatest extension of scientific inquiry in physics for over 200 years. What was the discovery? Discovery of the, of the electron? It was. What is the enamel that is used in jewellery made of? Clay. No? Uh, Mrs. Jones? Glass. Yes, powdered glass. Yes, indeed. Well done. <laughs> Mr. Humphreys, what was significant about the execution of Archibald Cameron, brother of Donald Cameron, Cameron of Lochiel, at Tyburn in 1753? Who the last person to be beheaded in this country? No. Mr. Doherty? Well, unless they're the last one to be executed at Tyburn. No. Mr. Gillard? Last public animal. No. Mrs. Jones? Oh, the last one to hang from a 
tree. <laughs> no, he was the last person of Jacobite sympathies uh, to be executed. Uh, he was involved in the 1745 Rising. Mr. Gillard, in 1926, the, a British general strike was called by the TUC in support of workers whose own stoppage went on for another three months after the general strike was over. Which workers were they? My workers. You're right. Which figure of Greek mythology got his name because of his swollen foot or feet? No. No. No, Mr. Doherty? Uh, Prometheus. Not Prometheus. Yes, Mrs. Jones. Hercules. No. Plenty of mythological Greek figures left, Mr. Humphreys. Apollo. No, it was Oedipus. Indeed it was. Mrs. Jones, which novel by Joseph Conrad inspired Francis Ford Coppola's film Apocalypse Now? Heart of Darkness. Yes. What individual has been largely responsible for the tourist development of northeast Sardinia? the Costa Smeralda or Emerald Coast? Out of time, Mr. Gillard? Aga Khan. Yes, the Aga Khan is right. And at the end of that round, we have the scores. They are four to Mr. Gillard, seven to Mrs. Jones, eight to Mr. Doherty, 13 to Mr. Humphrey. We have some music for Mr. Doherty now. Uh, it's usually credited to a certain composer born in the 17th century, but it in fact it owes little to him. It was largely put together by a 20th century musicologist from a manuscript fragment. Who was the earlier composer who gets the largely undeserved billing, though not the money, as Mycroft added? <laughs> I think I was Purcell. <laughs> no, not Purcell. Purcell. Mr. Humphreys? Is it Palestrina? No. Mr. Gillard? I'll be on it. I'll be on it. You're quite right. You left an N out, but that doesn't matter. <laughs> I think you said Albioni, but I think yes, it's Albinoni. And uh, what's an N between friends? Nothing at all. I mean, even your fellow contestants don't seem to mind. They smile, they beam. No. Yes. And that was the adagio for organ and orchestra, and the man who assembled it all was one Remo Giazzotto, and he holds the copyright, and he gets the cash. It was played by the Royal Liverpool Philharmonic, conducted by Sir Charles Groves. Now, Mr. Humphreys, in the 1930s depression, the German car firms of DKW, Audi, Hoch, and Wanderer combined to form a company which is perhaps best remembered for the Grand Prix racing cars it made. What was the company called? Out of time, Mr. Gillard. And that's you. No. Mrs. Jones. Porsche. No. Then I must tell you, it is Auto Union. And it's Mr. Gillard's turn. The 1989 Formula One Grand Prix motor racing season ended in acrimony with two drivers in dispute over who was the champion. Who were those drivers? Uh, Senna and Prost. Yes. Which future British Prime Minister was one of the founders of and contributors to a magazine called the Anti-Jacobin? Pitt. No. Mr. Doherty? Disraeli. No. Mr. Humphreys? Walpole. No. Mrs. Jones? Palmerston. No, it was George Canning. Mrs. Jones, in naval timekeeping. Once during the 24 hours, three bells are followed by eight instead of the four you might expect. When does this happen? What time, that is? Midnight. No? Now, what ample scope there is for guessing and scoring a bullseye. Mr. Doherty? Six o'clock. No. Mr. Gillard? Eight o'clock. Eight o'clock is right! <laughs> and you hadn't the faintest idea, had you, Mr. Gillard? No, you hadn't, but there, you got it right. 
And that's what counts. Here we have the score. Seven to Mrs. Jones, seven to Mr. Gillett, eight to Mr. Doherty, 13 to Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> According to Milton's Paradise Lost, which archangel actually carried out the task of expelling Adam and Eve from the Garden of Eden? Mr. Doherty. Gabriel. No. Mrs. Jones. Uriel. No. Mr. Gillard. Michael. Michael is right. Mr. Humphreys, the island of Goree was for many years a major port of shipment of African slaves across the Atlantic to the Americas. Off what well-known modern port does Goree lie? Lagos. No. Mr. Doherty? Fita. No. Mr. Gillard? Accra. No. Monrovia. No, it is Dakar. Now, Mr. Gillard, there are five royal fixed date occasions on which royal salutes are fired in London. The birthdays of the Queen, the Duke of Edinburgh, and the Queen Mother, and Coronation Day, those are four of them. What is the fifth on the 6th of February? Prince Charles. No. If you could remember all these dates, when they go off bump, we wouldn't all be saying, what the dickens is that? Ah, the others are, I think they're foxed. I think they are accession day is the answer. Mrs. Jones, what did John McAdam introduce into road construction that gave rise to the term macadamized? Metal roads. Uh, no, it wasn't that, Mr. Humphreys? The use of tar. No, I think they had the tar. I think they had the tar. What did he introduce? Little sherbet? A little flavouring. No, no, I ramble. Mr. Gillett, stone, uh, grit. Into exactly, sir, stone or grit. <laughs> no wonder they didn't do it before, but they're apparently not. And the scores are seven to Mrs. Jones, eight to Mr. Doherty, nine to Mr. Gillett, 13 to Mr. Humphreys. <laughs> Who said, Mr. Doherty of the House of Commons elected in 1918 that it contained a lot of hard-faced men who looked as though they'd done well out of the war. Lloyd George. No, wasn't Lloyd George. Mr. Gillard? Churchill. No, not Churchill. Mr. Humphreys? Nancy Astor. No, no. It's got, it's got a sort of edge to it that might very well, that was nice thinking. Mrs. Jones, what do you, will you have one? Uh. King George. No, it was Stanley Baldwin. I don't think King George was allowed to say things like that, at least not for public consumption. Um, uh, now, Mr. Humphreys, what title is borne by the president of the Variety Club of Great Britain? It's something like a King Rat. No, that's uh, someone else, actually, I think. Mrs. Jones. Um, Chief Barker. Yes, Chief Barker is right. Well done. <laughs> Mr. Gillett, into what? is Kafka's Gregor Samsa changed in the, well, the long short story, I think, or you could call it novella, uh, Metamorphosis. He's changed into something, uh, what? A beetle. He, he is indeed. The city of Hereford gets its name because it's by a ford. Over which river is that ford? Or through which river? Wouldn't it be a ford? Yes. Yeah, fords don't go over anything. Seven. No, not the seven. Mr. Humphreys? The Y. The Y is the answer. Mrs. Jones, what would a student of malacology be interested in? Apart from wine, women and song, of course, but I mean, you know. What is, what is malacology the study of? Fruit Can't, trees. No, not, not fruit trees. <laughs> Mr. Gillard? Illness. No, not illness. Mr. Humphreys? Biscuits. Not biscuits. <laughs> Where did that one come from? <laughs> Apart from nowhere in particular. <laughs> Very good. Could be. There must be a name for that. Uh, sounds like a sort of a study of special type of rock or something. <laughs> no, it's a study of mollusks. Indeed it is. And the scores now are 8 to Mr. Doherty, 8 to Mrs. Jones, 10 to Mr. Gillett, 14 to Mr. Humphreys. Last round begins. Mr. Doherty, what in a newspaper office was sometimes known as the morgue? Mr. Gillard. The library. Yes, the Cuttings Library. Mr. Humphreys, who was the king of the Persians who founded the Persian Empire, conquering the whole of Asia Minor? Darius. No. Mr. Doherty? Cyrus. Yes, you're quite right, Mr. Gillard. 
Yes. In which country of the Caribbean is Graham Greene's novel, The Comedians, set? Do No? Missy Jones? Hi, Tim. You're right, it's your turn. Well done. What, Missy Jones, is the official resident of the Lord Warden of the Sinker Ports? Arundel Castle. No, not Arundel. Mr. Doherty? Is it Dover Castle? No, not Dover Castle. At the very last moment, have a guess at it. Yes, Mr. Humphrey. Is it Dale Castle? No. Mr. Gillett? Rye Castle. No, all round it, though, of course. Wilmer Castle is the answer. And that brings us to the end of our competition. That was the final round on this occasion. Final scores are nine to Mr. Doherty, nine to Mrs. Jones, 11 to Mr. Gillett, 14 to Mr. Humphrey. <laughs> so, Mr. Humphreys is our winner. Uh, he will go forward to our semi-finals. Next week we have four contestants and on that occasion they come from the West. Until then, goodbye. Through this week looks distinctly unsettled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.